Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. I thought it would be nice to share an overview of this new property. There is a lot going on. 143 acres, gonna give you a bit of a tour. Gonna need some advice though. We have a lot of projects, it's completely vacant. There's not a building anywhere on it. There was barely a path to get uh, onto the land, but it's a pretty cool setting. A lot of different unique areas, a lot of history. I had to do a special environmental report as well, but I got a, a lot of history of the property through aerial photos uh, all the way back to the 1930s, I think 80 some years ago. And it's pretty cool to see how some of this terrain went from being mostly open to really filling in with trees besides the fields that we're sitting in now. I've got my oldest son Owen here with me. We're gonna take a spin around. There's about a 70 or 80 foot drop going down to a pond on the north side. We own actually a little bit into the pond. It's, it's filled up over the years and so the, uh, the dry land is kind of started to shrink. But I'll tell you what, even though we don't have any tractors in this video, that hill reminds me, Bora wheel spacers are a good solution for your machine. I am proudly sponsored by them. So if you're looking for a stability solution, maybe on a hillside, if you're having a load or maybe a cab and feeling a little uneasy, wheel spacers will widen your footprint, give you more stability. Check them out in the link down below. This is gonna take us years to develop. So if you wanna follow along, I'd love to have you hit that subscribe button. If you enjoy this video, checking out the property, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you're looking for something for your tractor or your skid steer, check out Good Works Tractors. Let's get to it. So what we're standing right now, this is gonna be south facing if we're looking that direction, what our house is gonna look over the front of the house. So the back of the house is gonna face north, kinda of go down the hill and into the woods. We're gonna to have to open that up, but it's um, the most open area by far and it's the levelest area. There's still, you know, a little bit of roll throughout this field, which is okay, I like that for aesthetics, but we're gonna clean it up, you know, get all these uh, autumn olive and any of the other scrubby pines and whatever else you see, we're gonna maintain that and knock it all down and turn this into some sort of a, you know, just a pretty setting. I'm thinking about putting some pines on the far end just to kind of block off the buildings. I don't know, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And now to the east on the other side of this uh, fence row that we've kind of already mulched through is gonna be where the barn sits. So the entrance is beyond that over kind of where we started in the uh, previous video we did, kind of mulching out a uh, drive to have an access road and I'm gonna need a lot of advice from you guys. You know, there's a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of articles, some stuff that I've done in the past, but there's a lot of projects I'm gonna be taking on that I have never done. I've never put in a road from scratch. So for me and for anybody else that's maybe got a project coming up, it'd be great if you'd leave some tips down below, maybe things that uh, you wish you would have done when you were developing your property, things that didn't work for putting in a road or things you wish you would have done putting in a road cleaning up fields, access trails, features that you wish you would have had in a barn or a house. We have projects galore to do out here. And so one of the first ones besides kind of clearing up and cleaning up this field is gonna be putting in an access road. Hopefully the barn is gonna go up this fall and we'll get the business out there too. And so there's a lot of work ahead that I'm looking forward to. Easiest way for you to walk. for the sill, like, you know how that's a wheeled skid steer? I need one that has like tracks. Oh. They handle Tractor mud. Better? Yeah, they handle mud and stuff a lot, a lot better. So we're in the woods, kind of walking along. There's actually a maintained trail. Uh, this is gonna be phase two and three of a development of a neighborhood that got sold off. It's not gonna be developed anymore, but this was a walking trail all along the pond. There's about 4,000 foot of trail, but one of the, I wanna keep it maintained and one of the big, challenges is going to be constantly dealing with down trees so going to be a lot of a lot of trail maintenance involved you know keeping it mowed and grading it out from time to time and dealing with trees so we're on the very east end of the property and we're standing on a bridge that uh, actually you could you could like drive golf carts on this if you wanted to um, and it's it's kind of strange the property ends pretty much right in the middle of the bridge and I mentioned it before how the property extends into the pond. You know, it, years ago it didn't, it wasn't this large. You know, it was a lot smaller. And so with time, it just kind of eventually grew and grew and grew. And we lost some, some dry land to the water. But so this entire south side, as far as you can see, as it trails around, it's going to dip down and become a, a wetland or a marsh uh, area at the far west end. And this trail starts here and just kind of meanders all along 
the edge of the pond and around that wetland and back over and then our property just continues on to the west all the way to another street that's over there and starting about midway kind of after those fields end and maybe another 50 or 75 yards in is when there's a lot of um, conifers you know a lot of pines that you can't really notice now but when the leaves are off they really stand out add a lot of beauty just hundreds and hundreds of pines that um, start midway and just kind of follow around and other pockets of them further to the west as well you have roughly somewhere between a 70 and 80 foot rise between the pond level to the very highest point on the property a lot of hills you know this is it's hard to find a piece of perfectly flat land out here um, we're going to do some leveling we want to put a, a soccer field maybe up by the house as well but beyond that you know it's going to be a bit of um getting used to for me with all the hills that are out here and trying to safely navigate those and figure out access roads without kind of side hilling so so one of the big things i want to do is try to maintain an open clear area we want to get a dock out into the water into the pond and keep an area free of lily pads i've seen various ways to do it curious to hear your feedback on the best methods to manage those and if we can permanently remove them or if we got to do it on an annual basis i don't know if it sprays or if you have to cut them or pull them out whatever the most effective method is but the least amount of hard labor would be great too although Owen's ready for some hard labor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real ready. So this is a sign that's uh, just off the property where our chunk of land on the south side of the pond, we're standing about right here. Um, you take that bridge across, and this used to be an area that you could hunt publicly. So I am anticipating some trespassers dealing with them for the first, um, at least the first few years. I'm going to have to do a really good job posting it. The trade-off is there's very few neighbors that are bordering this property so that was one of the things i really wanted to find was a, a a property that didn't have many neighboring properties you know i didn't want to be up to a neighborhood that had 20 or 30 houses along one border you know this whole side here is one neighbor obviously you have the pond a road and then you have about four neighbors or so maybe five that own along the south side so not that many different uh, folks to deal with on that aspect but there is going to be, I, I'm confident, I'm going to have to deal with some trespassers that are used to coming out here hunting. And again, that's just going to be something I'm accepting and dealing with and going to do a good job trying to post. And if you can go into it realizing you're going to have some issues, you know, you can kind of keep a cool head and just deal with it and move on from there. He's over there and just drove my truck around. Hmm. Be like somewhere over the winter and summer. And you get a, you get a tool called a lamp lane or a... funny how much they stick out mm -hmm. so over towards the west half of the property it really narrows down the dry land where that wetland kind of cuts into the south and almost makes a pinch point which for me as a deer hunter is a natural kind of a funnel area that I look for um, but as you go further west it's going to kind of go back up a hill really heavily timbered and then open up into um, a fairly good sized clearing towards the north end of that clearing is uh, what the uh, the developer used as a gravel pit for phase one of the development that's on the north side of cranes pond just across there and we're going to have to figure out how to level that out take away some of the slope from that gravel pit i guess not so much figure it out but just decide what tool to use there's not a lot of topsail there either um, i'm not sure what to do with that area yet originally i was going to put my barn over there and have a road coming from the west side uh, up to it i decided against that and decided to keep everything up here where it's um, more together but i'll turn part of that into you know a meadowy pasture again and then it goes back into pretty heavy timber mature timber gonna definitely need to get a forester out here and get a, a, a timber management plan in place i think um, gonna have to try to figure out what that's all about too just a lot of things i'm gonna have to learn and want to get a gun range in over somewhere on that side as well um, at least a pistol range it looks like we can probably get maybe a three or four hundred yard range uh, it's kind of tough with all the different dips and hills and nooks and crannies trying to find a long extended stretch of land with a good backstop uh, that's kind of away from everything so want to be careful with that but food plots galore out here as well and figuring out where the deer are roaming and the turkeys and everything else, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to it. 
All right, well, Chris says I'm talking too much, so I guess it's time to shut up and uh, get this one over with. But thank you so much for sticking around if you're still with me, and I hope you enjoy the videos that come out of this property. It's gonna be a lot of fun to make them, and that was one of the big reasons of getting this property was kind of a blueprint for all sorts of videos and tractor attachments and using them in different ways, and some of them showing how I already know how to use, and other ones learning how to use them, and, and just different projects that come up, and challenges that we're all facing as property owners. So that's all for today. If you did like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these videos out here on the development and the maintenance of this property, hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for something for your tractor or your skid steer, check out goodworkstractors.com. And if you've got experience developing your own property, I'd love to know about the pitfalls. A lot of others would too, so make sure you leave a comment down below. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.